Hey, what's going on, everybody? Dogman Dan here. We are in Warframe. This one is going to be a uh, uh, defense alert, and it's actually a 35 to 38 Grenier random group of guys Our here, people, whatever. Um, just playing around with the Saro and my Loki. Uh, Loki is just freaking awesome, by the way, with this stuff. Same as Ash. Ash is awesome in terms of the whole melee stuff as well. Um, but with that said, as we go through this, I want to talk a bit about the live stream that came up over the the other day. I finally had a chance to go through it, so I want to talk about my notes that I've gathered. Uh, I'll probably throw some things up on the screen, some images and stuff along the way here. Um, just bear with me if I'm just taking some notes to talk to you about. So if you haven't seen the live stream, uh, we can feel free to discuss it in here with me anytime. Anybody else that does want to leave some comments and discuss it a little bit more, it's fine with me. Uh, I fully encourage that. I'll tell you what I see, and oh man, first guy's down already. Um, and uh, I'll share my thoughts with you here so as we go through it. But this is going to be one hell of a mission. I hate this defense. This is like one of the hardest ones to defend. Um, especially when you're in a random group, because nobody's actually really working with each other to uh, make this happen. So there we go, another guy goes down. But unbelievably, Loki, if you guys can imagine, is extremely good at stuff like this. Uh, he can't really, per se, maintain something like Frost can with the snow globe and cover the point, but uh, with his radial disarm, it does help out a lot. Anyway, so as we go through this, this is going to be hell. Um, is it lagging? No, it's not lagging. Um, so, anyway, live stream. Let's get into it. Um, feel free to leave comments anytime. Uh, so let's see, what did I gather? So now they're gonna obviously they're gonna change the startup screen. It's gonna be on a ship now. So we're talking player ships. We're gonna have our own ships that we um, that when you log in to your ship, uh, it will now be logged in based on where you last played your last mission. So it'll be hovering over a planet. Um, like let's say you finished on Earth. When you log on to the game, you'll see your pl your ship hovering over planet Earth in the background, that type of thing, uh, which is cool. Um, you'll see other things going around there. You'll sometimes see a Grenier ship fly by. You'll see other Tenno ships fly by, that type of thing. Um, but that's just to overly enhance the game a little bit more and add a little more depth to it. Uh, so they're redoing the whole thing to do this. Um, Let's see what else. On your ship, every location will have a uh, scanner type of thing. Um, and each one will be different. Each one will have... You, it'll be kind of like you'll hear the Grenier or the Corpus or whatever talking about the region, talking about you, talking about other Tenno, talking about objectives, uh, that type of stuff uh, when you're over there by that scanner. So that's kind of cool. So they're really going to enhance the the feel of the game for you personally on a more personal level not including just the clan dojos and stuff but this is going to be more on a personal level I think the way it is seeming to be uh, more like the new user experience that's coming to the game I can't believe they all died uh, I don't think I can I can't save them all so radial disarm and save at least one um, Sorry. But anyway, okay, so you got that. You've got, um, they've been working really hard for animations and stuff, so now the uh, Warframe's head will move when you're looking in certain directions, at least on the ship from what we can see. I don't know if it's, I don't think that'll be that way in game, but at least on the ship, so when you're staring out at the, the planets and stuff on the ship, when you're looking at Earth, Warframe's head will actually move, which is kind of cool. A uh, little more depth, if you will. Um, everyone's going to get a ship, I believe, when you log on. And their first ship is going to be kind of like old and outdated and feel like it's lived in. Kind of, you know, and you're going to need to build that ship up in the process uh, as you do things. So the new experience is going to allow you to build that ship up with what they got modules to enhance you know everything inside the ship which is cool now the modules are going to be all over the place you're going to have to go obviously to 
different plans to find different things, uh, such as like your arsenal link up, your foundry link up, uh, your connection to Darvo, so that way you have your market link up uh, as a module, that type of thing. So I'm not sure how it's all gonna work yet, but just the fact that you gotta do uh, some kind of quests to go and find these modules, um, that's gonna be pretty awesome. It's gonna add some uh, to the experience for you on a personal level, I think. Um, as well as like a team-based level if you're with a group of guys, if you can quest with a group of guys type of thing, so. Or ladies. You can play the game as well, so I don't, I don't mean it in that kind of way, but. Um, so that's kind of cool. Let's see, what else are they talking about? There's going to be diversity inside here, so visually it'll be a little bit more diverse. Um, you're going to be able to customize your ship as terms of color. Obviously, installing modules. Uh, there will be some sort of capacity and slot restrictions as to where you put your modules and how you set them up, that type of thing. So there'll still be some kind of restrictions, uh, similar to like I would say how the dojo has with capacity and energy, that type of stuff as well. So that's cool. So you're still going to have some flexibility to set things up, but uh, you're going to have to think about how you set it up. I think um, they are. They are trying to figure it out so that way, you know, like, let's say you're a new player, you're not stuck on Mercury having to farm all the way through Mercury, but that you can actually have new diversity visually in the game so you can see different tile sets. You can see the different enemies right up the front. Um, you know, you can you can look at everything um, in the beginning uh, as a new player. So you're not stuck just farming you know, through Mercury till you get to the next planet type of thing. So I think what they're going to do is for newer players is they're going to have a couple of planets unlocked that you can actually go to um, as your choice so you're not stuck on just one planet. But, I mean, you're still going to have to level through everything, of course, if you want to open up all the planets um, for leveling, for being able to access, you know, uh, alerts and uh, those types of things that are going on, nightmare runs and stuff. You're going to still need to open everything up, but I think it's just make it a little bit more flexible so you don't have to necessarily farm all the way through uh, Mercury to get to, you know, Venus, and then go all the way through Venus before you can get to Earth or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So that's kind of cool. Um, and that'll allow more people to really feel like, oh, this is awesome, look at this tile set, look at that tile set, that type of stuff. You know, looking at it visually uh, in that terms, and also playing around with the different factions right off the bat, so... Uh, pretty happy about that. Um, then they're talking about the fact that they have to actually redo the whole architecture of the UI uh, to work in the new marketplace, new foundry, uh, the look of it. Um, so it's more space look, so it's more enhanced, that type of thing. And so they're going to have like a projective look and feel to it. Um, and it'll be very fluid in motion. It's not very fluid yet, but uh, it looks pretty cool from... Uh, what they were showing, um, and uh, that that should be pretty pretty awesome. It'll, it'll make a whole different feel for the game. I mean, it, just as I'm going through this, I'm thinking about it right now. There is no estimated time frame on this yet. Uh, they are taking their time. They're going through it. You know what they're saying is it's at least a few more weeks away because they've got to get everything squared away and get this done right before they release it. You know, and I totally agree with that. I would much rather wait a little bit longer and get this thing right in the beginning um, than have some major flaws go on right off the bat and come up with a bad experience for players. Um, they've been doing better with that in terms of their updates and stuff. There's been less and less hot fixes as they release these days. They have a lot. They've gotten it down from what it was, you know, uh, in the beginning. So that's pretty cool as well. So they are working hard, and I'm looking forward to definitely that stuff. So some more things. Um, in here, um, you know, if you're wondering, will you have to walk around your whole ship to do the upgrades? They're going to have a new pull down menu, um, like a pause menu, that will allow you to see everything and you can click, you know, where you want to go and it'll put you by that module so you don't have to run around the whole ship as you build it, type of thing. So that's kind of cool when you're installing modules and everything. Um, they're going to have a whole new navigation system, so when you sign in, you're going to be right over the navigation button. 
uh, if you click on it, it'll put you into the whole uh, planetary system. You'll be able to just jump right in and play. You'll see the planets that you have opened. You'll see where you can go. You'll see quests uh, for certain things like the modules. You'll see all your alerts that are available uh, based off obviously the planets you've got open. So it's going to be a little, a little bit easier to uh, go through it all and see it all. I'm pretty happy about that one. Uh, placeholders uh, in the worlds right now are still in development. So uh, well, the planets may change up a little bit here, like the sub uh, portions of the planets may change up how they look and everything a little bit. So um, keep that in mind. All of this is pretty much more concept until they finalize it. You know, it's nothing is real. Uh, full version of planets will all be able to be, will already be unlocked, obviously, for some of us players who play the game long enough to have everything unlocked. Um, there's going to be some new foundry stuff. Uh, they're going to split the foundries things up a little bit. I'm not sure 100% how they're going to do it. I know that one of the new foundries is going to be a genetic foundry. And this genetic foundry is going to be right off the bat. And this is going to be so that way you can uh, create or grow your Kubro, uh, your new pet. Okay. Uh, and I'll touch base just a tiny bit here on this Kubro from what I know. So the, uh, the new foundry obviously is where you're going to hatch your Kubro, if you will. It's going to take time to hatch him, like it does everything else. Um, there's going to be some interaction with it. You're going to need to visit the Kubro and make sure that you and it have kind of a nice affinity together. Um, the better your affinity with each other, the better interaction with each other, the stronger he's going to be inside of missions. Uh, the more neglect you give to him, the less he's going to be effective in combat, more or less. So, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a give or take. Uh, they're also talking something about bonding time. So when you first create or hatch your Kubro, he may not go right into battle. It may have to become like a level 1 or a level 2 type of bonding with you before he's strong enough to go into battle with you. So it may not be something that happens right away which is cool, so there's going to have to be some interaction, I mean it's going to be like a live, you know, like a pet, obviously, that you have to interact with uh, and keep things going. So, um, pretty cool, I think that sounds pretty awesome. Um, you're going to have some customization in him from what I understand as well, so you're able to customize their fur pattern, color type of thing. Um, talking some kind of like ability to be able to, like to pet them type of thing, you know, some interaction type of stuff that'll help with the whole bonding uh, and growing together with your uh, your Kubro, but it'll be uh, customizable to the extent that it feels like your pet, so even when there's more of them on the screen, uh, you'll know which one is yours, so we'll, we'll see how that goes, time will tell, hopefully as well optimizations won't be so bad because then you're going to add people that, if you have four people in here and everybody has a Kubro, now you're technically going to have eight people running in there. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Let me get over to this guy. Oh, okay. He's got him. It's fine. I'll keep blowing these people up. My Angstrom. Um, finally, you may think I'm crazy, but I think I'm going for one more forma on my Sabaris when I get back up to rank 30 on it. Um, I still have an extra slot. Oh, I blew myself up with the Angstrom. Damn it. That's what you get when you make it OP. Anyway, so yeah, so those are all the things that are happening in the update. Um, share some comments with me, talk with me about it anytime if you have any questions or anything. Go check out that update if you want to. Uh, I threw some pictures up here to show you some stuff. Uh, obviously stay tuned, I will have tons more stuff. As we know more, I will tell you more. That's what I'm here for. Um, and hopefully you enjoyed this uh, little defense run in the background here. Uh, if you did, please hit that like button as well. Comments anytime, as I always say. Subscribe if you're not subscribed and you enjoy the content. See you later.